Welcome, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, and welcome to this new episode of season three. I think it's episode seven oh. already. Um, my name is Julian. I'm a dev advocate focusing on AI and machine learning. And by now, I think you know my co presenter. <laughs> Sego, welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Julian. Hello, everyone. My name is Segelen, and I'm a senior data scientist working with the AWS Machine Learning Solution Lab. My role is to help customers get their ML project on the right track in order to create business value as fast as possible. Absolutely. Thank you again <laughs> for joining us today. Uh, as you know, all episodes are live. Uh, we're still in the Paris office, and you won't get any slides except the final slide, so screenshot, screenshot time, time. <laughs> and uh, we'll go through another demo today. Um, please ask all your questions uh, in the chat. Uh, anything you want to know, just ask and make sure you learn as much as possible. All right, we have uh, another very full plate mm -hmm. today and uh, let's get started. So what are we talking about today, Sego? <laughs> So uh, this week, we are going to discuss a very exciting topic, uh, a new topic in machine learning, which is AutoML. Mm -hmm. uh, we will introduce you uh, to uh, what uh, AutoML is and when you should use it. Then, starting from a solution available in SageMaker Jumpstart, mm -hmm. uh, we are going to train a model for credit risk prediction. Okay. First, we will do it uh, in the usual way first, and then we will launch an auto ML job with uh, SageMaker Autopilot. Okay. Finally, we will take a look at an open source alternative named AutoGluon. Oh, open source. Well, yeah. I love open source. Yeah, AutoGluon. All right. Um, so, what's the before we dive into into running the code? Let's try and understand uh, what problem we're trying to solve. So. What's the business problem uh, we're trying to model today? So today uh, we are building a model to predict credit risk. Okay. So uh, in fact, if you remember, we have uh, worked on this problem uh, in episode uh, four uh, of season two. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, long time ago. Yeah, 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah where we used the uh, light GBM algorithm mm. to train a binary classification model on the uh, German credit data sets. Okay. Uh, we also explain uh, its prediction using a game theory approach called uh, SHAP, Shapley Additive Explanation. Yeah, I remember that one. And uh, you can actually go and, and, and look at this episode. So season two, episode four, uh, it's, it's on Twitch and on YouTube as well. And it's a binary classification yeah. problem, right? Mm -hmm. So yes or no, should this individual uh, credit uh, be approved? Uh, so I know it's a good thing to recycle. Uh, I just <laughs> hope we're not we're not running out of ideas, right? So we're not running the same thing again and again. No. Okay, good. For mice. <laughs> All right. No, because because I'm lazy. But yeah, not that not. lazy. Yes. <laughs> No, but in <laughs> fact, since uh, last season, a number of end-to-end uh, -end solutions uh, have been introduced uh, in SageMaker Jumpstart. Mm -hmm. A nice beginner-friendly capability launched at reInvent 2021. Yeah, 2020, you know, sorry. 2020, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> we, we mentioned Jumpstart a few times, but I don't think we actually uh, covered it. So uh, let's share my screen and uh, and we can uh, we can take a quick look at Jumpstart and at the, the solution that we're going to use today. Um, so this is uh, obviously SageMaker Studio. And if you start from the launcher, actually, uh, you see this first box is about Jumpstart. Mm -hmm. Okay, easy to easy to locate. And um, so we don't really need a launcher here. And so inside Jumpstart, we see solutions. We're mm -hmm. going to take a look in a minute. And we also see uh, quite a few um, natural language processing models, computer vision models, plus additional resources on um, built-in algorithms and sample notebooks and blogs and video tutorials. So it's it's a really great place to start if you're just beginning with a stage mm -hmm. maker. Mm -hmm. Um, and so looking at solutions, uh, we can see, we can open them all. So we have, uh, as of today, we have 16 solutions and solutions are really end to end, uh, architectures to solve mm -hmm. a business problem, right? And so go and explore all of those. And there is one for credit decisions, which is the one we're focusing on today. 
And obviously, we, there's a bit of an explanation what this does. So train a light GBM model on SageMaker with that uh, German credit data set and explainability and the whole architecture that's used. Uh, and you could think, oh, no, I don't want to create all that stuff. It's too complicated. But you don't have to. All you have to do, my lazy friends, is to click on launch. OK, um, so now you see why I like the service. And what this does is it launches an AWS CloudFormation template. Mm -hmm. And if you're not familiar with CloudFormation, it's an infrastructure as code uh, uh, service. And it basically helps you automate the provisioning and the, the also the, the, the cleaning up mm -hmm. of, uh, of AWS resources. OK, so this is very nice. Mm -hmm. uh, so you just click on this, wait literally for a couple of minutes, and everything gets deployed. And you see the solution is ready here, right? And if you, if you click on this, okay, it takes you to this screen and you click on open the notebook and then you jump into this first notebook that kind of explains what everything is about, you know, summary of the architecture and then the additional notebooks because this solution has actually six or seven different notebooks, okay? So we're not gonna go through everything, just take a look at uh, data processing and then training, okay? Uh, so the first step is to uh, use AWS Glue mm -hmm. to build the data set. So it's a mix of the German credit data set and, and fake uh, customer data generated with a faker. And again, we covered all those steps in detail in uh, episode four, season two. Uh, and we store the data set in S3 and then we train. Okay, And we train with a custom container uh, that implements like GBM. So if we if we move on to the next notebook, that's, we'll really see um, the the data set preparation here. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so the mix of that German credit data set, CSV file, and, and fake data. Okay, mm -hmm. and we see a glue job being launched, and moving along, then we get our data in uh, in S3. Okay, perfect. All right, so not going through this. We've seen this before. Uh, let me close those notebooks to clean up. And then we move on to model training. Okay. And it's what you would expect. It's actually a good example of building a custom container if you're interested in that. Uh, so here we uh, we build uh, a custom container with a scikit-learn and light GBM, et cetera, et cetera. And we push it to Amazon ECR, mm -hmm. which is the Docker registry service on, on AWS. And and once we have this image, then we train. Okay, and it's just like like you know business as usual. There you go. <laughs> Couldn't I? Oh, it took me eight minutes. Yeah, earlier than before. All right, all right, earlier than before. It's <laughs> my condition is worsening. Um, and we use the SK Learn estimator, and we pass the the actual image. Let me maybe zoom in a bit. That. And so we use the, the Docker image that we built and we pass our training script and hyperparameters and data location. I mean, we've seen this a million times, right? And, and quickly looking at the training script, it's again what we would expect. Mm -hmm. So lots of SKLR and goodness, um, pre-processing objects from scikit-learn. Okay, so pre-processing uh, numerical uh, uh, numerical uh, columns and categorical mm -hmm. columns, and then basically building a, a, a simple pipeline with prediction uh, with pre-processing and training. Okay, and and then uh, training, so loading data, creating the LGBM object. I mean, scikit-learn, right? Cool stuff. We've seen this a lot of time before. And of course, all of this is part of the solution. You can go and read it. So it's really machine learning as all of us do it. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and you know, and it's good stuff, right? It's good stuff. And then we go and train this, right? Passing the location of data in S3. And it trains, we see lots of log information. And the one that matters to us is this. So the test or validation metric, which is the area under curve, which we've discussed many times before, is about 76.8%. Uh, yeah, okay, so write that one down. 
because obviously the game today is to do better, <laughs> right? Is to do better uh, with AutoML. Otherwise, what's the point? Yeah. Okay. So this is really, you know, the, what we've done on SageMaker many, many times. Mm -hmm. um, pre-process data in a notebook or in a SageMaker processing job, and then uh, train with the SageMaker SDK, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, it's all good. There's nothing wrong with that. We get full control over everything, but two things. We need two things for this, right? Mm -hmm. We need machine learning skills, mm -hmm. right? We need to know which algorithms to use, which hyperparameters to use, uh, how to process data, et cetera, et cetera, mm -hmm. okay? And of course, we need experience. Experience, yes. yes. Mm. Experience goes a, bit, yeah. yeah goes a long way uh, in you know knowing where to go and and how to tweak etc cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm. And for all of you out there who are doing machine learning and data science, yeah, it's like fine. You have the skills, you have the experience. What's the point, right? Well, I don't need auto ML. Well, uh, first of all, lots of people out there do not have ML skills or experience. Mm -mm. So what about them, right? Are they are they excluded from uh, from no. the party? No, they shouldn't be. <laughs> no. And uh, and then there's uh, there's another use case uh, where you could be uh, an experienced machine learning mm -hmm. practitioner, but you could have maybe you have 500 data sets and 500 models, mm -hmm. or maybe you know thousands of models because mm -hmm. you want to try different algos, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that you need to deliver. Mm -hmm. Right, and I'm sure you know you you have those problems with with customers sometimes, yeah, right? Sometimes, yeah. uh, maybe you're building, maybe you have one data set, maybe you're a SaaS company and you mm -hmm. have one data set per customer, and you want to do one model on each data set. So you know it could be hundreds, thousands of models, all all a little bit different, and of course you're not gonna do uh, manual uh, work like that, manual feature engineering manual tweaking on all those mm. sets. It's it's just not possible, right? No. Or maybe you know you have like I said, you have hundreds of data sets and, and you want to focus on the 10, the top 10, right? Mm -hmm. The top 10 data sets that actually lead to high performance models and focus on that because you have limited resources. So you're going to solve those 10 problems first. Mm -hmm. So I think those are the two areas, the two use cases where um, where AutoML uh, AutoML would make sense, right? Uh, but what is AutoML really? Right? How do we define it? It's a buzzword. I keep repeating it. Uh, so, Sego, tell us a little bit about what AutoML is. So, um, as you said, um, building machine learning models requires uh, to manually prepare, feature, prepare feature, uh, test multiple algorithms, and uh, optimize hundreds okay. of uh, model parameters in order to find the best model for your data. Mm -hmm. However, and this is what we say this week, this approach requires deep ML expertise. And if you don't have that expertise, you could use an uh, automated approach, mm -hmm. the AutoML approach. In a nutshell, in a nutshell, sorry, AutoML automatically prepare your data set, try different machine learning approaches, and combine their results to deliver high quality models. Okay, so it's it, sh it should be a one-click thing, right? Here's my data, go and figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. And grab a, 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 and go, go play video games. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> I, know, I love that. So I guess we have different steps inside inside the process. Do we find the same steps that we would do manually? Yeah, exactly. So we've got, of course, the problem discovery, the candidate model generation, the feature engineering and data processing, the model training, and uh, the model tuning. Okay. All right. So if you're new to machine learning, yes, as yeah. you will see, one click or one API call is, is good and you're good to go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, or if you're already experienced, mm -hmm. uh, you can still do one click or one API call, go play video games. But as we will see, uh, you also get to, uh, uh, to see exactly how the model was built. Mm -hmm. how data was processed, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, all the best practices are, are implemented in, uh, in the AutoML tool. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and that will should tell you, okay, this is, this is what I've done, because you need to understand how the model was built, you know, uh, explainability and, uh, and compliance, et cetera, all that stuff is important. 
And if you have expert domain knowledge, mm -hmm. you can add your own secret uh, sauce, your own uh, <laughs> magical feature engineering steps to even to get even more accuracy, mm -hmm. right? So these are really the two uh, the two scenarios, okay? And so SageMaker has this capability called SageMaker Autopilot. Autopilot. And um, we can actually use it in two different ways, mm -hmm. right? Um, so the first one, which uh, we're going to show you in a second, is just using uh, SageMaker Studio and the graphical interface, and uh, you don't have to code anything. That's cool. Right? So uh, like people, uh, another thing people call me out on is when every time I say zero code AI, uh -huh. right? And I know some of you like that, so uh, they make fun of me when I say that, but this is really <laughs> it, right? It's really zero code AI. Okay, make fun of me. That's all right. And then that's another T-shirt saying, by the way. <laughs> Um, and the second way, now of course, is to use the SageMaker okay, okay. in a notebook, and we'll we'll all show you that. And it's it's really that simple. It's literally it's literally uh, one line of code, one API call to get everything going. So, what about the problem classes uh, we can solve? What what can we do with Autopilot? Can we can we solve everything, or can we solve very specific problems? So at this moment, we can solve a regression problem. Okay. Uh, binary classification and multi-class classification. Okay, so that's that's good because it's really you know I guess when you talk to customers it's it's really like I'm going to say more than eighty yeah. percent of all the problems out there <laughs> exactly uh, classifying or predicting numerical values. Yeah, okay. definitely very common common use case. Yeah. So autopilot is simple. Uh, it's you know one click really. Uh, but I guess we still want to know what algorithms are available. So what models, what type of models will actually be trained there? So uh, you've got the um, building algorithm from SageMaker, sorry. So you've got the linear learner. Okay, linear learner. EGBoost, Okay, course. everybody's favorite. Yeah, and after the multi-layer perception. Okay, oh yeah, so we have deep learning. Yeah, so yeah. It's, uh, it's still a recent addition. It was added a few months ago. Okay. Um, yeah, so now we can also train and tune uh, neural networks. Okay, Ooh. so that's pretty cool. Um, so that's fine. So as we'll see, autopilot will do all of that. Now, how do I know, you know, once the model has been trained and when I get the, the artifact and the metrics, etc., how could I know, you know, how that was trained? You know, what did autopilot actually do? How do I trust it? And how do I explain this model to my my customers, for example. So you've got really uh, some full visibility with uh, autopilot. So uh, you will know how the data was wrangled, okay. uh, how the model were selected, uh, trained and tuned. So it's really not a black box, definitely, because you've got like full visibility. Okay. And we see that, I think we have um, notebooks as well. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah, yeah, auto-generated notebooks. Okay, yeah, that's, that's very nice. So we're going to look at those notebooks. Um, and uh, another reasonably recent addition is uh, oh. um, model explainability. Yeah. So autopilot will automatically uh, use uh, SHAP once again. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Uh, to show you the most important features, and I think we get a report and we get some cool stuff in studio uh, in the studio UI. So we can we can see all of it. Right? Mm -hmm. So so it's really not uh, okay. Click here. Here's a model. Here's the metric. And I won't tell you anything else. Go and trust it. No. Uh, it's okay. Here's the model. Here are the metrics. Here are all the artifacts that were that were used. So we'll see. We get the model, the the initial model, and the processed uh, the initial data set. Excuse me, the process data set, and the, the, we can actually see the feature engineering code. Mm -hmm. uh, we can see everything, right? And we get feature importance. That's pretty cool. Cherry on the cake. Yes. Okay. Uh, all right. So let's let's start uh, running things. Uh, so let me close. Um, let me put my demo glasses on. So I can't see the screen. I will be putting on the wrong stuff here. Okay. Uh, and yeah, this is pretty good. I can close this one too, and this one too, and this one too. All right. Okay, and remember AUC was area under curve was 76.8 something. Yeah. Now I closed it. But okay, anyway. I remember. You remember. Good, yeah. good, good, good. So um 
SageMaker Autopilot expects uh, CSV data. Mm. Okay, so it works on tabular data, uh, which is the type of data you would use for regression and, and classification anyway, so that's fine. Uh, as a first step here, uh, we just need to convert the data from the solution uh -huh. because that jo uh, glue job actually uh, built a data set in JSON format. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the light GBM script loads that JSON data. So here, just a very simple notebook, and it's really, you know, it's just grabbing that JSON data, loading it in a pandas data frame, um, and saving it to CSV. Okay, so it's really just conversion. Uh, the one thing that I'm doing, as you can see here, is I'm actually concatenating the training and test data. Because autopilot will automatically split. Split for you. So, I guess I guess you could keep um, a small percentage, a small a small split of the data set for actual testing purposes mm -hmm. for benchmarking. Here, we're not going to do it, but uh, you don't need to provide a training and validation set. Okay? You can provide as much data as you have, okay. and and autopilot will split. Mm. Okay. So I'm just doing this, and then I'm just uploading uh, that data to uh, to S3. So this is the uh, URI for the full data set, which we're going to use, and this is what it looks like. Okay, so a bunch of features. We see numerical features. We see categorical features, and we have the label, which is called credit okay. default, and we can see this is a true or false value. Okay, so I'm going to predict if a certain person is likely to default on credit or not. Okay, so that's the starting point, very basic notebook. So now the only thing we have to do really <laughs> right, is to grab this, right? <laughs> and I'm going to click on the right thing, which is this, okay, the experiments uh, icon, okay, that triangle here. Uh, and then I'm just going to click on create experiment, okay? And this takes me to the screen where I can enter a few things. So I give a name to my uh, autopilot uh, job and enter the location of the data set. Mm -hmm. Okay. In S3, uh, name the, the target column, so mm -hmm. pretty default. Enter the output location to store all the artifacts. And then I can select. The, the machine learning problem. So I could say, uh, I want you to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, if you do that, the default metric is the F1 score okay. for classification problems. Classification. So that's totally fine. But if we want to compare the area on the curve for autopilot uh, to the solution, then of course, uh, we want to say, please use AUC, right? So that's why I'm saying binary classification. And yes, we want to run a complete experiment. This means just go and tune and all the way, and okay. this will run actually 250 tuning jobs. Uh, if you only wanted to generate the candidates and the notebooks that we're going to look at, you would say no, uh, just create the notebooks and show me what you would do. And then you could run the extra steps yourself. And you could decide to deploy automatically the best model, but let's not deploy for now. Right. All right, so that wasn't hard, right? No. Uh, give it a name. Where's the data set in S3, CSV format? The targets. What's the column you want to predict and where to put all the stuff we're going to generate, <laughs> right? And then if you click on create, off it goes and you get a really fancy AWS animation. Yes? Beautiful. I'm sure that Probably 20 engineers worked about six months for this. <laughs> Love it. Um, well, at, you know, at least it's something. Yeah. Yes. Something. Okay, all right. Let's not make fun. Uh, so what we have here is actually very interesting. Uh, we can see the different steps of mm -hmm. the job. Yeah. Uh, okay, so pre-processing means basically analyzing the data set. Mm -hmm. uh, so what you said earlier, uh, what problem is this? Mm -hmm. Is this regression? Is this uh, classification? classification? So, you know, it's looking at that column and figuring out distribution of values and mm -hmm. I guess, you know, 
understanding if it's okay or am i predicting numbers or am i predicting categories all right fair enough so this is going to run for a few minutes and once we understand the the, the problem then uh, we can start recommending uh, and of course we're analyzing the other columns as well to figure out their type and their distributions and and uh, based on that we can recommend uh, feature engineering steps mm -hmm. and um, and algorithms algorithm okay. so it's the analysis phase that a machine learning specialist would do I would say okay what am I going to try here and once this is done we actually generate the candidates Okay, so a candidate is basically uh, a pipeline with a combination of feature engineering, transforming the data set with the feature engineering steps, training a model mm -hmm. on, on that, um, and, and then tuning. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to generate several uh, pipelines, as we'll see. And then, then, okay, once we have the pipelines, then we actually move on to transforming the data set in different ways according to those different pipelines and then we launch for each pipeline a tuning job uh, uh, to optimize uh, hyperparameters and total we'll gonna run we're gonna train 250 models okay so this this particular example runs for you know i don't know I, I didn't write down the exact time but it's, it's anywhere between an hour and a, an hour and a half so you could say, wow, that's very long, right? Um, but how much time would, would you need, right? Even Sego, <laughs> right? Even the expert, you would spend more than an hour and a half doing all of this. Mm -hmm. and, and probably much more than this, okay? Uh, especially on the Friday. And <laughs> finally, we generate an explainability report for the best model. So as I've said, this is going to run for a little while, so we can keep it running and, and, and we'll see it moving through the, the first few steps. And I've run this before, okay, as, as you would think. And once we're done, uh, so once we're done, uh, and this is the, uh, the job we see here, you'll see it here, and you can right click it and say describe AutoML job. And so we see, of course, the, the job profile which are all the parameters that we used. So we use, uh, uh, it's a binary classification problem. It's, uh, we use the AUC AC. metric and then we see everything else, okay? But I think what's more important is the list of trials. Okay, okay so the list of jobs that were run. So if you wanna count, there's gonna be 250, okay? And of course you can sort them uh, according to the metric. Okay, and there's a little star. Oh, yes, I love a team of twelve engineers. Okay. Right, there's a little star that tells you this is the best job. <laughs> okay, and okay, that's a very good AUC. You see, eighty-five. Remember how much we had? I think it was seventy-six. Seventy-six eighty-one. Yeah. Okay, so uh, that's a ten. It's almost an eleven percent improvement, right? No, no, we improve. Yeah, ah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> percent, no points. Yes, yes, it's it's plus nine points, uh, but okay. it's ten plus uh, almost eleven percent improvement. So we improved AUC by about eleven percent. Okay, so that's that's a very very significant improvement. Okay, um, and we can deploy that model. So if we select it, and we click on deploy. Well, then we can go and deploy it to an endpoint, mm -hmm. right? So super nice. Uh, and still no code, right, by the way. And if we're curious about this job, then we can right click and say open in model details. And we see additional information. Okay, so we can see all the artifacts. So this is the input data set that we provided. Uh, that data set was split and shuffled, so we can see the splits. Obviously, they were transformed according to the, the pipeline. Uh, using feature engineering code that was, again, generated automatically. That feature engineering code was used to train feature engineering transformers, right, in scikit-learn. And then we train the model, and then we have explainability. So it's exactly what you said, it's open book. Mm -hmm. Right, and we can go and look at everything. Okay, and for the record, this is an XGBoost model. Okay, 
So let's say we're not going to look at all those different things, but let's say we want to look at maybe the feature engineering code, right? So we can go and grab that file. I actually did this already. And here it is. Right? And so this is the code that's basically transforming that data, right? And you see it's actually using objects from a, a package called SageMaker SKLR and extensions which look a lot like a scalar and objects. <laughs> and we build a pipeline. Uh, we actually build a pipeline for numerical uh, mm -hmm. columns, and we do a robust imputing to, I, I suppose, field missing values, yep. Uh, yep. replace with none. Um, we do uh, one-off encoding on categorical columns, et cetera, et cetera, right? So it's a simple data set. But... Uh, and we also apply scaling, et cetera. So all that code is generated. And you could say, oh, what's where? where is that stuff? I want to see it. You know, I want to understand exactly well. The good thing is it, it's on GitHub, oh, right? Cool. So we can see uh, that code, uh, I don't know, pre-processing. Yeah, we can see those objects here. All right, so I think here's one that's actually used, yeah, a so threshold one on encoder. So yeah, we we get the code for that, right? So you can see exactly how data is processed. Okay, it's not, this is cool, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's very mm -hmm. cool because for model explainability, it's you perfect. need to say, hey, this is how this thing works, right? You need to explain it to your compliance, mm -hmm. uh, 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 the compliance body or, or, or to your, uh, you know, your own internal uh, compliance teams or, or just your customers, okay? <laughs> this is how this thing works. So we can trust it, okay? All right, so we see all the artifacts and yes, we see model explainability as well, right? So in this case, uh, we see the, so these are global shell values, mm -hmm. right? And so we can see the top, uh, the top values are, whoops, uh, credit <laughs> duration, credit amount, employment duration. Mm -hmm. And if you, yeah, I'm not, a, I'm not a banker. I don't know anything about banking, but I think these are reasonable. Right? Mm -mm. Uh, yes, it makes sense. Um, if you're gonna say, uh, if you're gonna say, if you're gonna predict, you know, am I gonna default uh, on, on my credit? You know, credit duration is very important. Mm -hmm. If it's a 25-year credit, there's, a, I guess, a stronger chance to default than on a three-month credit. Mm -hmm. uh, the amount, yeah, the more money I, I took <laughs> from the bank. <laughs> You know, the, the the higher the chance that I can't pay it back. Uh, employment duration. If I have a very stable job, you know, uh, there's I guess you know all things considered, there's a better chance for me to uh, to repay that loan than to uh, not repay it, and, and a few more things, right? So pretty interesting, pretty interesting. And you can export this to a PDF report when where you see. Uh, you see that and you can download the data to build your own graphs if you want it. Okay. So here's our model. And you know what? So I didn't lie. It was really one click yeah, to one. do all of this. It would be just one click to deploy. Uh, now, how did we get there? Right? How did we get to this model? Now let's let's understand why basically why is this the best one? What what are the other things that we tried? Okay. And so this is where we can open the candidate generation. Uh, yeah, the notebook. candidate. So the data exploration notebook has basic stats on the, on the data set. So in this case, honestly, there's nothing to write home about. But the candidate generation data set, and I'm going to import it. Um, and yeah, we can use the data science ground. It's going to be fine. Let, oh, let's take a look at the, the one we created. Is it moving along? Oh, yeah, see, it's moving Perfect, along. Yeah, okay, yeah. so pre-processing is done. Uh, we can see those notebooks have been generated. So now it's doing the feature engineering thing, right? And model tuning is really the longest uh, step, as you would think. Right, all right, so here's the note. Uh, yeah, here's the, the actual notebook. So, let me close this. so this is really, to me, this is the, the golden uh, piece. Yeah, the golden piece in autopilot. Uh, it's totally okay if you just want to ha have a good, you know, high performance model and deploy it and use it. But if if you want to understand what happened under the hood, this is the one to read. Okay, so there's there's a little bit of setup. 
Um, I guess we could try and run some of those things, see what happens. I feel lucky. Mm -hmm. Right. So these are really set up, uh, okay. set up parameters. You know, where do I store all those things? Right. Transform data and et cetera, et cetera. Okay. And what I like also here is this thing called available knobs. And you have this uh, similar cell throughout the notebook, which tells you, hey, if you want to tweak, this is the place to this is the place to start tweaking. That's right. Uh, for example, we see um, this first pipeline here, right? So DPP zero. I'm guessing DPP means data processing pipeline, but it could be something else. So, all right, tell me. Uh, and here we see the the first candidate. Mm -hmm. So this one says, uh, this data transformation strategy first transforms numeric features using a robust computer, uh, categorical features using threshold one hot encoder. So that looks a lot like the one we've seen. Mm -hmm. This could be the winning uh, pipeline, I think. It merges all the generated features and applies mm -hmm. robust standard scaler. Transform data will be used to tune an XJ boost model. Here's the definition. Okay, so you could try, you know, I don't know, you could you could run larger instance types, uh, or you could you could try your thing. So we say yes. Uh, okay, this is an interesting pipeline. I want to try it. Okay, and I, here's another one. So this is another ID, right? So this time we do robust imputer and and we yeah. and and threshold one on encoder again, and then we try robust PCA um, to I guess reduce dimensions. And then standard scalar and XJ boost again. So you could say, oh, this is a cool one, but you could also <laughs> exclude it if you want to. You could say, oh, no, no, I want to run the pipeline myself and I, I'll just skip this candidate. Okay, let's add this candidate anyway. Okay. And here's another one with linear learner. Okay, so this one goes a little crazier on uh, data, data prep and it use, uses the built in linear learner. Okay. One time extreme values transforms. Not sure what that is, but I'll take a look. Okay, sounds <laughs> cool. I want I want to have that. Okay, and then uh, here's another one with XJ boost. And yeah, okay, why not? And here's another one with XJ boost. Okay, <laughs> uh, XJ boost is I mean it's it's the go to thing, right? But you'll see the oh yeah, this one does TF, yeah, oh yeah tfidf vectorizer on text features okay that's exactly okay. good all right more xj boost more xj boost aha okay this is the one i was expecting so this one again uses um, some uh, feature engineering steps and it uses um a then... multi-layer perceptron so it's a neural network this one okay so this is cool. Let's let's add neural networks to the mix. Okay. Now we can see. Oh, all right. Now show me the candidates. Okay. So I can see I have nine pipelines. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, but like I said, you could you could run the job again and you say, oh, I want to keep tweaking. So I want to take the one thing you could do is you uh, take the winning pipeline mm -hmm. and keep tweaking. Okay. Uh, and I think this would be. I think this is actually we could see if it's TPP zero because we could see. The artif yes, it is DPP zero. Yeah. Okay, so pipeline zero is the winner. is the winner, so to speak. So you could you could just exclude the other ones and keep tweaking this one. Okay. Yeah, why not? Okay, and then of <laughs> course, then of course we're gonna start running things. Okay, so we're going to start transforming data and, and let's let's go and, and fire this one up. So here we're running that pre-processing step, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, and this will, uh, as we've seen, process the data set, store the processed artifacts in S3. Uh, and so I guess we will have nine different versions of the data set. And then we can go and launch uh, model tuning. So this is where you could also go um, extremely crazy on uh, hyperparameter ranges. Right, so you could say, well, you know, I'm gonna tweak XJ Boost in a slightly different way than Autopilot did because I think this could help, or I want to add an extra parameter. So you could really, as you can see, you can reproduce the exact experiment mm -hmm. and very easily tweak. Mm -hmm. Right, um, you could you could modify the pre-processing code and and run the experiment again, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera.
Okay. And last thing I want to say, this actually uses a very cool feature in uh, um, hyperparameter optimization here, where we tweak for different algos. Mm. So we tune for multiple algos. So that's one of the re advanced capabilities in, in SageMaker model tuning. Uh, you can actually launch a job that tunes for multiple algos, not just one. Okay. This is a very good example of that. Okay, and then we launch that, and then at the end of the day, we could deploy the model, et cetera, et cetera. So as you can see, there's a, yeah, deploy the pipeline, and this gets deployed on an endpoint, and then you can start predicting with it. Okay? That's cool. So yeah, so yeah, it's, it's, it's completely open, right? It's completely open, and, uh, and it's, uh, it's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. You can tweak a lot. Okay? Okay, a little friendly, you're still uh, engineering features, but you can see, okay, just go and... Have coffee or play video games, right? Makes sense? Makes sense. Makes sense. Perfect. <laughs> okay. So um, now let me show you how to do the same thing um, programmatically. Oh. Okay. Because we've said one of the use cases is I've got 500 data sets that I want to try. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to click 500 times. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or maybe you have an intern to do that, but that's <laughs> really not a great internship. No. So you want to do this programmatically. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So let's move on to, I can close this. And yes. So here's how we do exactly the same uh, with code. Right. And we use the SDK. So we use the Sage Recruit SDK. We grab the same data. Mm -hmm. Right. And here's the, the one line that I was mentioning import the auto ml object okay okay and okay pass the <clears throat> excuse me the sage maker role for this as always the problem type the metric again these are optional okay i'm I, the, the only reason right. why I'm, I'm running it like that is because i want to make sure we use AUC. AUC. but if you you could absolutely remove those two lines and just say uh well just predict this credit default thing uh, max candidates, I think, is actually optional. I should have that done. Uh, this is the default value, right? Mm -hmm. But if you want fewer jobs or longer jobs, or why not? You can you can tweak this, and then you just call fit, just like a normal SageMaker job, and you pass the location of the data, right? So the simplest version could really be, you know, auto ML uh target attribute name yeah with yeah. the role the role is the uh, mandatory target, target attribute and that's it. and call fit wow. okay super nice super nice super yeah. nice and then once again the job uh starts and um we have you know i, I added this uh simple function to wait for the different steps okay so you could say wait equal true and then come back you know two hours later and um, or you you could say you know wait equal false, and you could want to you know just watch that thing run, uh, which is extremely boring, but okay, just to show <laughs> you how to do it. And uh, and so basically we query the, the the AutoML job and we look at the status. Okay, and so we wait for analyzing data to be complete, and okay once this is complete we have those notebooks those generated notebooks. And then we wait for future engineering, right? Because maybe you want to go and inspect the, the splits. Uh, and then we wait for model tuning. I think you can see, so each line I think is 60 seconds, if I remember, yes. So you can see data analysis is one, two, three, five, six minutes, future engineering about the same. And then model tuning is the one when you can, you can actually play video games. Uh, and then it generates the explainability report. Cool. Okay. But again, I think it lasted for about an hour. Uh, of course, we can get lots of very informative JSON on um, on everything. Okay, uh, if, if that's your thing, we can get the same information on the best candidate, right? Mm -hmm. And we can see here. So here, in this case, it was pipeline two. two. Oh. Yeah, pipeline two. And I'm trying to find, I'm trying to find, yeah, the AUC I think was here. Okay. Yes. Uh, I saw it just up there. 
So <laughs> eighty four, eighty eight. So uh, pretty close. Pretty close. Pretty close to um. So this one was not as good, but almost, almost, almost. And we can see, uh, yeah, we can certainly see the container in there and know which algo this is. But that's too much JSON for a Friday night. <laughs> And I'm bored already, so let's <laughs> move on. Okay. But I'm pretty sure that it's actually a boost again. And we can deploy, right? So uh, call deploy, pass the instance type, and the endpoint name. And then, okay, wait for a few minutes. And then we get to see uh, where we, we create a Boto 3 SageMaker client, and we just invoke the endpoint. Great. Okay. Is that endpoint still up, by the way? Uh, where is it? Endpoints, endpoints, endpoints. Ah, uh, yeah. In service. In service. Oh, Good. thank you, my friend. So I'm going to go and try it. <laughs> and, oh, that's not looking good. <laughs> all right, notebook died. All right, all right, all right. How is that possible? Come on, let me try again. Endpoint name not defined. Where is the? Oh, I'll it's here. here. I'll get the. No, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> right. I'll fix it. I'll fix it. Come on, come on. Yeah. That's All right. right. See. All right. Okay. So now we pass this uh, sample to the endpoint, and it's obviously CSV. And okay. So in this case, this brave customer is not going to default. So pretty nice. Pretty nice. Yeah? And one thing we can see is it actually says false. It doesn't say point, uh, 0 0.12345 mm -hmm. right? because this endpoint, right? Uh, and I'm going to describe the endpoint. Um, this endpoint is actually, um, it's actually a, an inference pipeline. Okay, so what we deployed here is actually the sequence of uh, feature engineering, uh, uh, pre-processing, okay. prediction, Trend. post processing. Okay. Right. So if you want to really dive into the details, um, this is uh, we actually have several containers okay. that are chained, and this is called an, an inference pipeline that are chained, so that we can actually pass um, the the data in the exact state format that we trained in, and okay. we actually get a label. Right. Okay. So it's also something that autopilot does. Uh, it's not just the, the raw prediction. It's the um, it's the process pre-processing prediction post-processing. Okay. okay. All right. So you can go and and investigate. Okay. So this is autopilot. Mm -hmm. uh, super friendly. Yes. Very easy. And I think uh, you know it's it's pretty it's really good for beginners and it's good for advanced users. So we have one more thing. Of course, uh, there's an open source project called Auto Glue On, right? Uh, and it lets you do auto ML. So, Sego, tell us more. <laughs> so, uh, Auto Glue On uh, library was uh, open sourced by uh, AWS at reInvent 2019. So as you said, it is an open source AutoML framework and uh, it helps you to train uh, SOTA machine learning models for uh, image classification, object okay. detection, test classification, and tabular data prediction with mm -hmm. little to no prior experience in machine learning. Okay, so same kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. Same kind of thing, put your data, bring your data, one line of code, build me something. Exactly. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> okay, pretty cool. Uh, so there's a research paper. Uh, you, you'll get that on the on the yeah, final it's, slide. It's a, it's a good read. It compares uh, Auto yeah. Blue on to uh, other frameworks, exactly. and uh, it goes into uh, it goes into some of the details. Uh, what's what's uh, what's specific about uh, Auto Blue on? Um, I think it's it's using different machine learning techniques, like yeah. ensembling, etc. Can you tell us a little more about it? Yeah, exactly. So um, some key aspects of the autogluon, and uh, in our case, uh, tabular, include uh, its uh, robust data uh, processing to handle uh, heterogeneous data sets, mm -hmm. uh, modern neural network architecture, 
and as you said, um, powerful model ensembling based on a um, novel combination of uh, multi-layer stacking and repeated k-fold bagging. Okay, so it, it, it focuses more on combining exactly. models exactly. Uh, versus, um, so it's a different approach. Autopilot, yeah. I think, is more about, I have a limited set of algos, but I'm going to optimize mm -mm. You know, them to the max using very clever uh, model tuning, exactly. right? Mm -hmm. Bayesian uh, algos, et cetera, et cetera. Um, here, Auto Blue One is more about, okay, let's try many different models exactly. and let's combine them in, in very clever ways. Exactly. Uh, so, okay, interesting. Interesting. Um, okay, so um, tell us a little bit about those techniques bagging, stacking. Yeah. And sampling. And sampling. That's a lot of bling. <laughs> bling, bling. All right. It's Friday, but yeah, I want to know more. Okay, let's go. So, uh, first, uh, ensemble models combine prediction from multiple models, which allow to outperform individual models. Okay. okay, we take weak learners and we combine them. Yeah. Fine. Exactly, and it's really like um, it's very common. So, and all of the best performing auto level frameworks uh, today rely on some form of model ensembling, mm -hmm. such as begging, boosting, stacking, or uh, weighted combination. Okay. In particular, um, in particular, BIOS auto ML framework uh, utilize shallow stack ensembling. Okay. So, in the case of the auto auto uh, tabular data. A uh, collection of individual based models are uh, individually trained in the usual fashion. Okay, so we train them on the data set exactly. as, as usual, and then? And then you've got a stacker model, okay. which is trained using the aggregated prediction of the base model as its feature. Okay, so we combine all the predictions exactly. from the individual models, and that's the input for another exactly, training. and okay. exactly, and thanks to this uh, stacker model, uh, you get, you are going to be improve uh, the, um, upon the shortcomings of the individual base prediction and exploit exploit interaction interaction between base models that offer uh, enhanced predictive uh, power. Okay, cool. Let's look at an example. Yeah. All right. Um, so. Still running this in a notebook. Um, this is how you install it, auto glue on. Um, and I need some extra stuff because they have some uh, some widgets, uh, S3FS, because I'm loading directly my uh, same data set from S3. Okay. The label is still called credit default. Okay. And the metric is still uh, um, AUC. our uh, AUC. Okay. So in this case, we have tabular data. So we import the appropriate objects. We create a tabular data set just like this, a tabular predictor just like this, right? Here's the label. Here's how to measure accuracy or measure your well, performance. And then we call fit, passing the location of the training data, the time limit. So here I, I fired it up for an hour, but uh, <coughs> you can use uh, any amount of time. And actually, Autoglon will adapt. Okay. It's pretty clever about how it uses time. It tries the let's say the 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 high performing algos first right the ones that are expected to do well are, are tried first so even if you try for a limited amount of time you still get good results mm -hmm. and then it goes into the more exotic stuff uh, we have some presets uh for best quality they will take more time but you know it's worth it if you really want to get to production grade models and then, you know, it just runs and we see feature engineering and then we see lots of models being trained. Oh, cool. So we see KNN, we see light GBM, we see random forest, we see cat boost, we see extra trees, we see <laughs> neural net fast AI, XJ boost, <laughs> neural net MXnet, and there's probably more, right? So there, there are a lot of different models. So this trains for <laughs> an hour. Let me go down. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay. It actually saves all those models locally, right? So you see the different runs. This is uh, probably the latest one. And I can see all the models that were tried out. Mm -hmm. So, and, and these are, you know, what you expect, uh, you know, pickle objects. So you can load them and again, you can, you get to tweak a little more if you want to, whoops. And okay, so it trains again and again and again. Ah, here we are. 
And so we get to the end of the hour and you can see the leaderboard. So here the top model achieved an AUC of 82.34, uh, which is still much better than the initial mm -hmm. uh, job that we uh, that we uh, run in the solution. It's a little less than uh, than the autopilot job, but I didn't apply uh, model tuning here. Okay. Right. So you can also add model tuning to auto on. Okay. And you can see here this is a weighted ensemble, and and again this combination of models is available, and you can go and inspect them. Right. And you can see stack level two, so I guess you know two uh, two, two layers uh, of models. Okay. And then, of course, I can predict. So here I'm just grabbing uh, my, my uh, test set, dropping the, the label, predicting, uh, and I can get feature importance as well. And I can see feature importance here. Uh, so checking balance, which makes sense. Yeah. Again, you know, how much money you have in your account. We see credit duration again, employment, employment duration, duration again, uh, credit amount again, uh, finance repayment history. So this is really interesting because we, we, pretty much see the same features that we mm -hmm. saw in autopilot with completely different algos. So I think this uh, this kind of tells you, yes, these are, these are, if those two frameworks come to the same conclusion about which feature are important, mm -hmm. you would say, okay, yes, we're really looking at the right things here. Okay. And you can go, of course, and then explore. We just, uh, we just scratched the surface here. Okay. Uh, so, this is auto glue on very interesting alternative uh good for benchmarking and so go and try both um and there uh see see what you see what you can do and see what you can learn uh i think that's the end that's really what we wanted to tell you today so a little trip to auto ml mm. uh, again if you're completely new this should i think this should show you that okay there is an easy way into machine learning mm. right it's it's not intimidating this thing Okay. Exactly. Uh, as you dive deeper, of course, you get into algos and model tuning and hyperparameters, and 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 it gets you know a little more complicated. But I think this is a really great way to start. You know, train some models on some simple data sets, and then start reading about the algos, start reading about the data processing steps, and and you know just get familiar with this. Start from real examples, right? Don't start from uh, math and and, no. and equations and okay, just Start from this, and right? this is a really, really, I think, beginner-friendly way. And for experts, it's a great way to train tons of models automatically, mm -hmm. and then just quickly figure out which ones should you keep tweaking and which ones should you just yes. abandon. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Screenshot time. Yeah. Two minutes. Uh, yeah. Perfect. Okay. So here we are. Screenshot time. So the notebook will be posted very shortly <laughs> at the same location. <laughs> right. Uh, there's a there's a blog post that I wrote on um, on Pilot. autopilot. Um, there's another great blog post which I forgot to mention. Shame on me. Uh, on uh, auto glue on by one of my colleagues. Oh, I feel terrible about this. So let me go and grab it. Um, yes, Shashank wrote this. And uh, oh, I type completely. Okay, here it is. All right, all right. <laughs> we want you to read this. It's a good one. Okay, so screenshot time again. Okay. Uh, so one on autopilot, one on auto glue on, and this is the auto glue on website. Uh, this is the GitHub repo, and, and this the is the, the, the research paper, which again is is very very interesting. Okay, well we're on time. Amazing. Uh, Sego, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Julian. Um, thanks for telling us about ensembling and stacking Packing and bagging. bagging. K-fold, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have a headache uh, if you say that again. And uh, thanks, everybody, uh, for watching this. Thank you to our colleagues who will help organize all of it. Much appreciated. And we'll see you in two weeks. Uh, we're not quite sure what the topic will be. I think we need to have a chat on that. We're not running out of ideas, but we need to find a, a good topic, okay? And we'll find one, trust us. Thank you very much. Stay safe. Have a great weekend. And until then, keep rocking with machine learning. <laughs> Perfect. Bye. -bye. <laughs>